Welcome to... Hey, I'm not finished yet. Dude, you'll get your chance in the next episode. Come on, let me do it now. No! Boys, boys, get it over with. I'll be running the show soon, so you're wasting your time. Welcome to Music Detectives. I'm your host, Detective Tom. Conway's contract with MGM is up, and Conway moves to ABC Paramount Records. His time at ABC Paramount will be brief. It'll only last one year, and only yield two singles. So let's investigate. Let's do a label lowdown. Started in 1955 as Ampar Record Corporation, a joint effort between the American Broadcasting and Paramount Theaters Incorporated, the label became known as ABC Paramount. ABC Paramount has the distinction of being the first major label created after the start of rock and roll. Now, Paul Anka was one of the label's biggest stars. He was signed at just 15 years old. Don Costa of ABC Paramount signed him after hearing a song Paul wrote and played to him called Diana. It was also a song Conway Twitty would cover on his Rock and Roll Story album. ABC Paramount would also advertise its Full Color Fidelity, where they would include messages like this one to encourage people to adjust their records to the standard RIAA curve. In 1966, the Paramount was dropped from the name and the label became just ABC Records. And in the late 70s, ABC Records would have an interesting logo with the ABC inside an eighth note. But by the end of the 70s, ABC Records would be sold to MCA Records for $30 million in 1979. That would be about $107 million in today's money. Famous artists that were at ABC Paramount included Carol King, Ray Charles, Paul Anka, Cliff Richard and the Shadows, and Johnny Nash. In 2012, One Day Music released a two-CD set called Hit the Road Jack, the ABC Paramount Story which featured 50 songs from the ABC Paramount catalog. Hit the Road Jack. Conway Twitty and Loretta Lynn will cover this song on one of their duet albums, which we will certainly cover when we get there. Now it's time for a Music Detective's detailed inspection. Conway moved over to ABC Paramount Records in late 1963. He would stay with them only long enough to release just two single 45s. The first of which contained Go On and Cry and She Loves Me, She Don't Love You. Cashbox called She Loves Me a busy beat attack that could get some place. They would give Go On and Cry a B plus, saying it's also worthy of teen attention. Billboard would claim the song was a sure hit. Now despite the praise, neither song would get near the charts. Let's take a look at the 45. You see the multicolored ABC Paramount logo and what appears to be someone's attempt at a gold star. Nice. We have the catalog number 4510507. Now make a quick note of that. I have another 45 to show you shortly. Under the title, we see that Conway penned this tune and was accompanied by his band, the Lonely Blue Boys. Flip side, we see no star. I guess they wanted to mark the better side. And again, Go On and Cry is also written by Conway. All right, let's put this down and look at another 45 copy I have of this record. Now, right off the bat, you can see the record is way more worn and barely readable. Instead of a gold star, someone taped a note over the ABC Paramount logo. If you look closely, you can see the title of the song is laid out differently on each copy. On the left, it's all on one line, and on the right, it's using two lines. They've marked She Loves Me as the best side. Interesting. Do you think She Loves Me is the better side of this 45? Let me know in the comments below. Now looking past the wear, we can see some additional differences between this copy and the other. For starters, the 45 dash is now gone from the catalog number. It's just plain old 10507 now. Produced by Helena Corp is also right underneath the catalog number. It was below the line on the other. We also can see the orchestra is spelled out here and not abbreviated. And finally, product of ABC Paramount Records Incorporated is in a different font and it's longer. Checking out the dead wax, we have ABC 11812. 
And now I don't know if you can see it, but there's an MR with a circle around it here too. Very hard to catch it in the right light for the camera, but hopefully you can make it out. Here's a better look at the symbol. It's for the Monarch Record Manufacturing Company, plating and pressing plant in Los Angeles, California. Now on the other side here, we have ABC 11813. Conway's only other vinyl at ABC Paramount was released in May of 1964. The songs were My Baby Left Me and Such a Night. First, we have the cash box review. My Baby is packed with excitement and Such a Night can also make it big in a big way once again. Once again? Well, yeah, and it did, but not in the way Conway would have thought. First, let's go into the Music Detectives Hall of Fame and get some history on this song. Welcome to the Music Detectives Hall of Fame. Such a Night was written by Lincoln Chase, who also wrote Jim Dandy and some hits for Shirley Ellis, and sung by the wonderful Drifters, famous for other tunes too, including There Goes My Baby, Save the Last Dance for Me, and Under the Boardwalk. The Drifters would take Such a Night to number two on the R&B charts in 1954. But it wasn't the Drifters who would rechart their popular song. It would be the King. Elvis recorded and released the song back in 1960 on his album Elvis is Back. But after Conway recorded and released his version, and as it picked up steam, Presley's version was suddenly released as a single too. Well, the King stole Conway's momentum and reached number 16 on the Billboard charts. Conway's version was nowhere to be found. Rock and roll had dealt Conway another blow, and the winds of chains were certainly howling now. If you get a chance, listen to the Drifters, Elvis, and Conway's version of Such a Night, and let me know in the comments below what you think of all three. Let's take a look at the vinyl. Here's the blue and white ABC record sleeve that it came with. Not exactly the right sleeve for the time period. You can see the ABC logo in the upper left. From the lowdown, you know they hadn't changed their name yet. Next, you'll see the labels all black and white, letting you know it's a promotional copy. We got some cool stuff going on here in the Dead Wax. First, in cursive, we see Bell Sound. Hopefully you can see it here clearly enough. Bell Sound was for Bell Sound Studios out of New York. Next to it is ABC-12000-1A. Notice we have the 45 dash in front of the 10550. Since we saw our other copy of She Loves Me without the 45 dash, that means it was likely pressed after such a night, when they finally dropped the 45 dash. Flip side again has the bell sound in cursive, and now ABC 12001-1A. Well, I hope you enjoyed another episode, and if you're in the Shreveport, Louisiana area, be sure to check out Conway Twitty at tonight's Holiday in Dixie block party on the Riverfront Carnival site. Well, that does it for another episode. The best way to let us know you're enjoying the show is to subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss our next episode. Also, hit that like button too while you're at it. 